space the next uh, few years. Supplemental payments will be made, $3.4 billion this year, additional supplemental payments uh, to pay down those liabilities. And you'll see over the forecast period, an additional $7.6 billion. Here's the number you've been waiting for, this surplus. Projected operating surplus for the state of California uh, in the May revisions, just shy of $100 billion, simply without precedent. No other state in American history has ever experienced a surplus as large as this. In fact, this is actually significantly larger than last year's uh, operating surplus, around $75.6 billion. When the crisis first began, many people lost their jobs or saw their income take a notable hit. And many of those who didn't have savings quickly fell behind their bills, including their rent payments. Now that there's no longer an eviction moratorium in place, tenants who are behind on rent are desperate to get caught up to avoid losing their homes. But those who have yet to apply for federal rent relief, funds may be out of luck. Unfortunately, that's not the case for many residents in the state of Connecticut. The state says it will continue to process existing applications for rent relief until it runs out of money. But those who don't have a pending application can no longer access the federal funding. And that doesn't mean all Connecticut residents who need help are out of luck. Residents of New Haven can turn to a separate program for aid, and those who qualify may be in line for $12,000 in assistance. The city of New Haven is continuing to offer rental assistance through a council program. This program still has $213,000 in funding. According to a city spokesperson, those who apply for aid through this program can receive up to $12,000 to cover past due rent, but funds owned prior to March 2020 don't qualify for this incentive. Tenants who wish to apply for assistance through the Castle program must meet the following criteria. They must have an income, they must have an income that does not exceed 80% of the area's median income, and they must have proof of income, lose, loss, or disruption during the crisis. So if you're a New Haven resident who is yet to financially recover from the financial blows of the crisis, don't worry because you can still apply and receive some federal rent relief on time. Now, I definitely suggest applying for relief before funds run out, everybody. House Democrats have introduced multiple proposals aimed at sending direct payments to Americans to help cover high prices of gas. The plans have some similarities to the one that sent $1,400 stimulus checks to millions of people last year. The national daily average has been more than $4 per gallon for two weeks. AAA cited lower crude oil prices as one reason for the slight price drop at the pump since last week. It also said demand for gas is down, which is typical for this time of year. It may, see, it may be a sign of people changing their driving habits. Peter DeFazio announced the Stop Gas Price Gouging Tax and Rebate Act. The bill does not use a national gas price average as a measuring stick, but does call for households to receive a monthly advance tax credit, similar to last year's monthly child tax credit. The money would come from taxing oil companies for what DeFazio calls excessive corporate profits. In a press release, DeFazio stated, Big Oil will pay a one-time 50% windfall profit tax on any adjustable taxable income in 2022 that exceeds 110% of their average adjusted taxable income during pre-crisis levels between 2015 and 2019. The extra tax would actually hit large oil companies that produce or import at least 300,000 barrels of oil per day. Surpluses with federal funds, this does not reflect that. Uh, the $97.5 billion uh, does, however, reflect constraints as it relates to Prop 2, Prop 98, so the discretionary surplus is closer to $49.2 billion, but $97.5 billion operating surplus. I think it's important to highlight, and as I was noting, as it relates to the issue of volatility, this slide. This is an important slide, and let me give it a little bit of context. You look at capital gains, and that's where a lot of the volatility comes from. Capital gains is a share of personal income taxes in the state of California. Going back to 2000, and if you don't remember 2000, maybe you remember 1999, 2000, what happened right after 99, 2000? It relates to the dot-com boom, bust. Percentage of capital gains, percentage of personal income was 10.4%. You look back to 1976. It's interesting, a little historic average. 1976 uh, to the present. The capital gains as a percentage of personal income in the state of California has averaged 5.04%, a little over 5%. You can see what happened in 2000. 